It is important to grow plants in space because the astronauts are hungry. Plants provide food and they provide nutrition that we need for deep space human exploration. And you need to have flowering to be able to understand fruit production, like tomatoes or peppers or any other type of small fruit that you might want to grow in the space environment. Most of the time the astronauts say, oh, we want things that we can eat, but I do know that Scott Cowley, after he was in space for a very long period of time, really wanted to grow flowers. Hi, Scott Kelly aboard the International Space Station. I want to go and check on my flowers I'm growing here in the uh, Columbus module. It's kind of nice to have some flowers up here. You don't see much that is uh, alive and growing besides the six of us here. A few days into the experiment, we actually had a power loss to uh, the express rack, which shut the veggie lights off. Well, we had them turn the veggie lights back on, but unbeknownst to us at the time, the fan didn't turn back on. This led to a buildup of water inside. And so the plants that were growing pretty well um, got extra water. I got a call at four in the morning from the operations controller saying that Scott says something's funny growing on the plants. They basically got got so much water that fungus was able to enter and to, to start to damage and grow on some of those plants. And so we said, hey, we got to get the fan turned to high. It was almost like going from, you know, a really, really gray, rainy time to beautiful, bright, sunny day. Furthermore, Scott wants to take care of the plants, says, hey, when we're on the way to Mars, we're not going to be calling home to ask how much water to put in. We're just going to water the plants. You know, he did a wonderful job with saving the zinnias and, and making them flourish. These flowers came out and, and everyone's moods just perked up. On harvest day, Scott was like, hey, can we just do it on Valentine's Day, which was a Sunday? It was very, very cool to be a part of having him do something so creative in space, the first ever on-orbit flower arrangement. And then on day 300, when he and Misha took their photo, right, 300 days in space, what do you have in his hand? His little buddy, his little flower. We got back the seeds, uh, separated them out, inspected them, tried to germinate them. No luck. We put them back in the desiccator in the fridge to dry out and refrigerate, and we didn't think any more of it until Lane came along. My name is Lane Diesa. I go to North Carolina State University, and I study horticulture science. It makes me feel really um, great that we have these creative interns who try new things and push the boundaries. One of my mentors, Matt Romine, told us that we had seeds from space flowers stored in one of our science refrigerators. He basically told us that we could have at it and try. To my surprise, we had one seed germinate. For the past two years, interns have tried hormones, um, uh, numerous amounts of different techniques. All I did was add water. When Lane first said, you know, it got them to germinate, we all were like, wow, that, that's amazing. I was coming down and checking on the plants like every morning. Now we have roughly 45 flowers growing here today at Kennedy Space Center. It was really a wonderful end to this whole experiment because not only have we done to seed to seed production in space, but we've also learned a tremendous amount in the process. I saw Scott's tweet uh, when he got his flower back. It was, a, it was this moldy flower, not unlike the ones that we got back, by the way. They looked the same. And, uh, you know, he's like, he wanted to grow flowers from that flower. So I, hopefully he still has the flowers or some of the seeds. I would tell Scott, put them in the fridge. Put them in the fridge for a month or two and try again. Don't give up.